This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the quick and easy way to build an awesome website. What's up, guys? Hope you're all well, and I hope that you're hanging in there despite all the chaos and confusion lately. I mean, with riots out your front door and social media having turned into a complete flammable war zone, wasn't it nice when the only things exploding were smartphones and graphics cards? Now, I can't fix the world's problems. Hell, I can barely tie my own shoes. That's why I keep them permatide and wear them like slip-ons. But anyway, in a time where the human race is more divided than ever, it's comforting to know that this community stands united in our love for technology. So let today's video be a common ground that we can share and appreciate together, even if it's just for a few minutes. Now that said, let's move on quickly before we start singing Kumbaya, because f that noise. So following my review of NVIDIA's budget-based GTX 1050 Ti, which I benchmarked inside of my high-end silver build for testing purposes, it was clear to me that the mashup of hardware might not be the most realistic or sensible configuration for an entry-level gamer. So today we're re-benchmarking this Pascal card inside of a budget rig that I put together for just north of 400 bucks on PC Part Picker at the time of filming. This should create an environment that better suits our sub $150 graphics card while putting the PC's price point in certified console killer territory. Kinda weird to keep using that term though when consoles are already dead. Today we'll also be comparing the frame rates between this PC and the one in my initial review to see how much the GTX 1050 Ti is crippled by lower end components. So starting with our only constant in this test, we of course have the MSI GTX 1050 Ti, which retails for just 139 USD. I've also applied the same overclock settings as in my review with a core clock offset of 220 megahertz and 350 megahertz on the memory clock. On the CPU front, AMD continues to be a crowd favorite for these budget builds, so here we have the Athlon X4 860K. At 100 bucks, it packs in quite a decent value for a quad-core chip. However, it'll probably be the biggest culprit behind any performance dips coming from the silver build with its overclocked Core i5-6600K, especially in CPU-intensive titles. The Athlon chip comes bundled with AMD's much-improved Wraith stock cooler, which you can check out my hands-on review of for a detailed analysis. Connecting all the things is the Asus A68MH+, an FM2 Plus micro ATX motherboard with PCIe Gen 3 support, as well as front and rear panel USB 3. I snagged this and a single 8 gig stick of Mushkin Essentials DDR3 at 1333 megahertz for a combined total of just 80 bucks. Now, as affordable as SSDs have gotten over the last few years, there's still a royal luxury for this kind of budget. So here's a $40 1 terabyte Hitachi Death Star 7200 RPM good ol' mechanical hard drive. Providing the electric nectar of life to our humble gaming PC is EVGA's 430 watt W1 unit. For 30 bucks, you get a 120 millimeter double ball bearing fan, 80 plus white certification, and a power supply that won't cause a nuclear meltdown. Last but not least, we have one of my favorite budget micro ATX chassis, the Core 1000 from Fractal Design. A steel internal frame, front panel USB 3, and included 120mm intake fan aimed right at the GPU make this case a solid value for the 30 bucks I paid for it, totaling the final cost of this build to just $413. Here's a side-by-side -side look at the specs for today's build and the one I tested in my review. Besides the graphics, the hardware in these rigs couldn't be further worlds apart, so it'll be interesting to see how they stack up with the same video card. All tests were run at 1920x1080 with the NVIDIA 375.57 Wickle driver on Windows 10. Ladies and gentlemen, I now give to you the gift of benchmarks. So, pretty telling results, but nothing too unexpected apart from that Tomb Raider score where the budget PC outperformed the silver build by 7 FPS. Wait, half of 7 is 3.5. 3.5 minus a half three and a half minus a half is 3. Half-Life 3 confirmed! Ha! This is Lord Gaben confirming that you are wrong. Damn it! Oh, well, at least we have the Steam controller still. <laughs> Thanks for that. 
So I can't really pinpoint the cause of this anomaly with Tomb Raider, but what we do know is that the budget rig's average FPS barely flinched in some titles and saw as much as a 38% decrease in others when compared to the silver build. With several of our games being CPU whores, these performance hits aren't too surprising when you consider the IPC difference between a modern day Core i5 and an aging Athlon chip. As a result, users would probably need to lower the quality settings on some of these games to maintain playable frame rates. Personally, I think the X4860K is a bit underpowered for this GPU, and I'd probably opt for something more akin to an FX8350 to help reduce or even eliminate the presence of any bottlenecking. Be that as it may, this little budget system here scored over 50 FPS on average in five of the seven games, three of which were on Ultra. I mean, bear in mind that these are also some of today's most demanding titles, so the fact that this 400 something dollar PC can take on AAA gaming is quite a testament to the GTX 1050 Ti's capabilities as an entry level 1080p card that makes the budget VGA market all the more competitive. Meanwhile, the three high-end Nvidia cards who have still found zero matches on Tinder have since resorted to circle jerking. Besides gaming, there's a ton more you could do with this budget PC, like browse the web, draw a picture, or build a website with Squarespace. I've tried making websites with other services or software in the past, and I remember the frustration I felt trying to get the exact look that I wanted. Bringing your vision to life with Squarespace is literally so easy, it's turned web design into the one thing I never thought it could be, fun. It's actually kind of fun. Once you dive in, you quickly realize that there's a lot you can do with little effort. Then the ideas start flowing and it can get addicting pretty quickly. And in the unlikely event that you can't figure something out for yourself, they have a super friendly support team who's ready to help you out at a moment's notice. Sometimes I just message them to say hi. I don't think they like that though. As a DIY PC enthusiast, I forbid you to pay someone to make your website for you. Save an F-ton of money instead and do it your gosh darn self. You guys can check out the link in the description below and use the offer code BITWIT for 10% off their service to start building your dream site today. As always guys, don't forget to toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Half-Life 3 confirmed.